This research will examine how the advertising industry uses celebrity endorsement as a way to influence consumer buying behavior. I have chosen to focus on celebrity endorsement in particular because I find this strategy as most likely to generate big masses of people's attention from all over the world. Rick Suttle stated in an article written about advertising strategies that the natural liking consumers have for certain celebrities makes them an easy target to influence their purchase decision and behavior. Celebrities have the power to use their social status as a way to influence large amounts of people into believing a brand, product or service is relevant simply because they trust the person promoting it. This advertising technique has become one of the most utilized tools by the industry to present an image or idea to society, typically for their own favors and financial gain. As people get imposed with more and more advertising, companies are constantly working on new ways to manipulate human behavior to influence consumers into buying what they are promoting. According to marketing, branding and social media expert Susan Gunelius, advertising is specifically designed to trigger the human emotional response system. She further claims that there are popular common typical human emotional triggers one can build on when creating marketing messages to influence large masses of people's purchase behavior. The following chapter will present a list of some of the emotional triggers Junelius suggested the advertising industry utilize extensively, but I will present them with my own examples and choice of advertising material. Number one, fear. Fear appeals are typically used by insurance companies to raise awareness to all the bad things that can possibly happen in one's life. People end up paying large amounts of money monthly to several organizations because of the fear of being left with nothing if something bad ever happened. This advertising technique is also commonly used in advertising related to skincare, body image and makeup products. The companies that promote products related to cosmetics often use celebrity as their face outwards to draw attention to the brand and to gain people's trust in the products being promoted. They often play on people's fears of getting old, fears of getting wrinkles, etc. etc. Once you start getting down this road, there is usually no end. People suddenly believe they need several creams and serums for their hair and different body parts in order to slow down the natural process of aging. And this is just really sad. Who need eye cream serum? It's just ridiculous, all these products that they try to market to, to society. I believe that taking care of oneself adds quality to life, and that looking the best you can is a show of respect to those around you. Tom Ford for Men is based on my own personal grooming regimen. It's born from my deep conviction that fine grooming doesn't have to be complicated to be effective. It should be simple, straightforward, and intuitive. The collection includes multifunctional skincare products to calm, comfort, and mattify the skin, and grooming products to balance imperfections and achieve a polished look. It's quite simple. Take care of your skin, Look closely at your face, use a few basic corrective techniques, and you will present your most handsome and impeccable self to the world. Number two, guilt. I believe that almost every person has felt a powerful feeling of guilt in their life. Guilt and shame can have a paralyzing effect on us, but it can also work as a catalyst to wanting to take action on a particular matter. Nonprofit humanitarian organizations are well known for utilizing forms of emotional advertising effectively. Guilt is proven to be an emotion that can influence purchase decision. One example of a humanitarian nonprofit organization uh, that utilize guilt appeals and celebrities to promote awareness to what service they are offering is the public charity organization Comic Relief Incorporation. Ed Sheeran played a role in one of their campaigns for Red Nose Day in March 2017 to hopefully gain attention from possible voters. To make a strong impact on the viewer, they have chosen the most traditional approach, namely the creation of a video 
that shows a celebrity's presence in a community categorized as poor. In the commercial, Ed Sheeran is contributing socially with music and singing together with the children in the community. This puts the singer-songwriter in a good spotlight and thus makes him look like a person with a warm heart. We do song, song for song. You sing one, then I sing one, yeah? We'll be loving you till we're 70. He talks a laugh a bit with the locals and then they go straight to the point by portraying a sad story from a child's perspective that will hopefully make the viewers feel emotional in some way. The campaign message motivates the viewer to donate money based on the feelings of empathy for those categorized as less fortunate and the need to live up to the expectations of society to give to charity. It's been over three years since the outbreak of Ebola killed over 11,000 people in West Africa. When Ebola hit, what was it like? My father was sick. Dying of fermenting, toileting, fermenting, toileting. They came to the Ebola center. The next morning, they bring it here, you know, in town. When was the last time you went to school? I was saying that we need Ebola town. I can't go to school. My mama get money. Sing this song. So I remember my dad. What's up, Peaches? So don't why I tears remind you your life. Last thing I always wanted this trip to be was to be the celebrity who comes over to Africa and cries on TV and says, send your money over. I really wanted to come and like, be like, everything's positive, everything's great. And then, uh, I don't know, I was just singing with that girl. Her dad, her dad taught her how to sing. And she just got really choked up about it. You know, I, I watch Comic Relief every single year and this is always what celebrities do. And I always think, ah, no, but is it really that bad? And then I sort of turn up and, Yes, it is. To send a girl like Peaches to school for a whole year is only £45. Please give what you can. Go to rednoseday.com. Thank you. In order to feel better, one is encouraged by the organisation to go to the website and donate money so that one can feel that one has made a difference. I actually caught myself singing Ed Sheeran songs after looking into this, which means that I have achieved something. From now on, whenever I think of Ed Sheeran or some of his songs, I will remember the Red Nose campaign. However, they will not get me to wear a stupid red nose to show the world that I have made a difference. I think it's good enough to know within myself that I am making a difference by being true to who I am in this world. And I'm also working on composing music and art so that others can hopefully be inspired to create from imagination to physical reality. I believe that if you're kind to animals, humans and the earth itself, you are making a difference. You do not need a red nose to show the world that you are a good human being just because you donated some money to a fundraising organization. Like, lead by example and you will see change in other people you surround yourself with. Here is another example of the exact same advertising approach with different celebrities, different plays, and in a different situation. So we're here at the main emergency room. It's a bit of a strange atmosphere. Quiet, no one's really talking. You can just hear a lot of kids crying. She's just not very well, the poor thing. So this little boy is three and has malaria and is very anemic and that's why the bottoms of his feet and his hands are so white. Being honest with me, how ill is he? He's very ill. And sometimes if they come in too late, you're not able to save them.
No movement. Too weak to even cry. Watching Kofi and his mum is simply heartbreaking. He's too weak to even hold his own head up. It's horrible to watch. What's frustrating is malaria could be prevented. Five pounds would pay for a mosquito net or emergency medicine so that kids like Kofi wouldn't be this ill. Please don't make text yes. Text yes to 7.12.5 to donate five pounds and save somebody's life. Number three is trust. As mentioned earlier, a celebrity can use their social status to gain people's trust regarding a particular brand, product or service simply because they trust the celebrity promoting it. The American supermodel Gigi Hadid collaborated with the magazine Vogue cover star for a rest and relaxation behind the scenes video for her Vogue cover in her hometown Los Angeles in 2016. They made it look like it's an exclusive video of a day in the life of Gigi cruising around town in a car with a friend RuPaul, but after one minute in the video, it's clear that it's actually an advertising video. Gigi is seen in several different outfits throughout the video, and it's clear she's promoting the brand's Chanel, Gucci, Maybelline Grey Lash Mascara and later she drops by the fast food chain restaurant In-N-Out Burger and orders a double burger fries and chocolate vanilla milkshake. We get to see shots from various angles of Gigi being all dressed up in that pink dress while carrying the takeaway bag from In-N-Out Burger. The video also portrays the perfect life of a model career and material success. So much happened last night. I think he's in London. Where are you? <laughs> I'm shooting my video for my Vogue cover. Just for her makeup in the heels. You haven't seen a copy of her cover, have you? No, does Anna like it? She loved it. I think I'm gonna cry. I've been training for this cover my whole life. Um, can I have some Evian, please? Today's workout has been seven minutes. I'm really pushing myself this week. Should I get on the bus here? You're a celebrity. You can get on here. But if you're a regular old person, you gotta go to the Hard Rock Cafe. Let's go to the Hard Rock. You know Rue is my supermodel mentor. Yeah. Is it them? No, no but <laughs> it's a paparazzi. <laughs> I was gonna put you off in the belly of the beast. You know what the best thing to do for disguise is those medical masks, you yeah. know? And you just throw on a, a skull cap and a medical. There's Chanel right there. I'll try. You're yeah. gonna see a picture of me next uh -huh. week. They're gonna be like, Gigi, deathly ill. I'll be like, no, RuPaul just told me that I could get away with this. So you're here in LA and you're doing this shoot right now for, for My Vogue. Cover. Is it your cover? Is it? Oh. I don't know if I was yeah, but, 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 I didn't hear anything. So, we're walking down the street. We love our day because it's just a little place to escape. Careful, heads up, heads up! Ooh, thank you. Hey, if you want to walk around with Zane on your chest, so oh. not like that, but like on a t shirt. <laughs> Turn it up, like way up, please. The line is so long. Hi, can I please get a double double fries and a chocolate vanilla milkshake? We get to see shots from various angles of Gigi being all dressed up in that pink dress while carrying the takeaway bag from in and out Burger. It looks so staged and ironically it is. I have dinner soon so I thought I'd just air dry. Number 
Number four, value. Most of us like to get quality products or services for a decent price. That is also why it is such a good marketing message for a business to use. The billionaire wife, Melania Trump, expressed values-based marketing in an advertisement video released in 2014. She expresses to the camera how her designs are inspired by her interest in fashion, culture and architecture. Despite her billionaire lifestyle, she chooses to design jewelry that middle-class Americans can afford. She's done her research and strategically chose to reach out the customer's values, which is to buy quality products at an affordable price. Melania's marketing message is to offer affordable jewelry that people can wear on any occasion to feel special. She wants to make women feel elegant, chic and happy when wearing her jewelry designs. My passion for beauty, design and fashion inspired me to create the timepieces and fashion jewelry. I studied architecture and design and modeled for many, many years. So I combined those two worlds together and I could really see while I was modeling what women really like to wear, how they would wear it, how they would style it. I want to offer them affordable jewelry that I, they could wear it and feel special every day. I traveled all around the world while I was modeling and all different cities, different continents, different culture gave me inspiration for design. But I focused more on New York, Palm Beach and Paris, three cities that I call home. New York is offering more business style that you could wear it to the office, you could wear it to the cocktail party. Palm Beach, you would wear something when you play sport, tennis, golf, when you play with your child, when you walk on the beach. And also Paris collection, it's a little bit more chic, a little bit more uh, glamorous. And you would wear it to special occasions and has a lot of stone in it, so it's a little bit more noticeable. You could buy many collection, New York, Paris, and Palm Beach, and you could mix and match them. They're really special, unique pieces designed from my uh, own ideas, as well from my own jewelry box. My design philosophy is to design pieces that I would wear that comes from my heart, from my soul. I am involved in every design from A to Z. Every piece represents me and, and every piece has a story from my life. I have many roles in my life, mother, wife, daughter, sister, and I design for those kind of women. I want women across the country to feel glamorous, elegant, chic, and happy when they wear my jewelry. I find that the composition of the video does not go hand in hand with her marketing strategy. The advertisement took place in the Trump penthouse, which for me does not reflect an affordable lifestyle at all. And while talking about her design, she poses amongst gold, luxury, and she promoting the lifestyle of materialism and external beauty. It's all very glamorous. And throughout the video, she encourages women to not spend a lot of money on jewelry. However, this to me also seemed kind of two-faced considering she's wearing a 12 carat wedding ring worth $3 million when she expresses this message to the viewer. Number five, belonging. Appealing to people's sense of belonging is typically used in advertising attempts to make people feel like they are a part of a community, family or a categorized group. Because belonging to a group is something that most people find important in order to feel safe and are popular. Sadly, the desire to belong to a community can subconsciously contribute to lack of creativity amongst individuals and thus lead to suppression of people's own values and sense of who they are. In December 2017, sportswear manufacturer Adidas released an advertising campaign video featuring famous football players, uh, rappers and other professional sports players. Calling all creators. Those with the need to make something new. Who are obsessed with progress. 
Creativity is everything in today's game. It's about making a statement. I think what we're all trying to do is leave a mark so the game will never be the same. The game will never, never be the same. We're all creators. Related by a mindset. That's our job, to continue to try to enlighten while we inspire. I've been taking the example of it, but now I have to create for myself. <laughs>
um, and on the wall behind her we can see a picture of a naked woman. In the video, she encourages people to wear mini skirts, crop tops with piercing in the belly, high heels, glamorous tracksuits, tiaras, and she encouraged people to dress like a princess in order to get treated like one. Hi, I'm Paris Hilton, and I'm here to tell you why the early 2000s were the hottest years in fashion history, but you already knew that. I love seeing all my favorite looks on the runway inspired by me, the OG. Because I love you guys so much, I want you all to look cute. So today I'm gonna tell you some of my favorite 2000s trends and why I love them. Tracksuits. Tracksuits are so cute and comfortable, but always wear ones that are colorful, or else you'll look like you're actually going to the gym. Ew. Graphic tees. T-shirts are the best way to tell the world your most profound thoughts. Mini skirts. Skirts should be the size of a belt. Life short, take risks. Uggs. Actually, I'd never be caught dead leaving the house in Uggs. Always wear heels. Pink. Trade millennium pink for millennial pink. Multiple phones. Staying connected to your BFFs is super important. So you should have at least three phones and they should all be bedazzled. Tiaras. Always dress like a princess. If you do, you'll be treated like one. Wait a second. She's actually saying that one should dress like someone who's beautiful to look at in order to be treated nice and with respect by other people. Majesty, only Paolo can take this and this and give you a princess. Best friends. Best friends are the best accessory. Rhinestones. There's no such thing as too many rhinestones because it's hot to bling as much as possible. Trucker hats. I love trucker hats, but Von Dutch, no. Belly buttons. No crop top is too cropped, and belly rings are so hot. Low waist jeans. Jeans definitely look better lower. High waisted is so 90s. Last but literally never least, 2000s babes always look like they're having fun. And if you're not having fun, then just leave. can see that she depicts herself as a sexual object uh, in front of the camera and she's actually passing on the legitimization of looking like a slutty doll and that materialism is what's hot and being smart and different is not. <laughs> and to my surprise she actually stated in the video that best friends is great to have as accessories. I mean like come on this must be one of the most materialistic women existing on the internet and but yeah, no judgment. I'm not judging her as a human being. I'm just really being critical to what she is exposing to to young girls and people who idolize her. But yeah, to be honest, like I also had a time in my teen life where I posted selfies of my makeup and my looks because truth is, I was exposed to these kind of advertisements to the degree that I thought it was completely normal to post photos like that and in order to get respect and attention from my friends. So yeah, it's just really sad that it's still going on uh, and that it takes so long time before we wake up and realize that what is actually going on. <laughs> so yeah, basically to sum things up, uh, Paris Hilton and the company behind her actually encourage people to copy the hottest trends, uh, look like everybody else, to gain respect and to always look hot and sexy in whatever situation you find yourself in and to get respect. So basically I ask myself this question, as I know many have done before me, but why does the advertising industry chooses to normalize this shit? I can imagine that the answer goes very deep, but I think we should save that for another video to not make this too long. Number eight, sex appeal and sensuality. Sexual messages are something that almost everyone can relate to in one way or another, and that is probably why it is used so much in advertising. Often they promote a product or service that has nothing to do with sexuality at all, but they choose this strategy because they know it attracts attention to an otherwise tame product. Kim Kardashian's role in the commercial for Carl's Jr. Salad is a perfect example of a company who utilizes sex appeal to advertise a product. 
I'm such a neat freak. Everything's got to be clean, crisp, and tasty. And while the best things in life are messy, it's fun to get clean. Who said salads can't be hot? The new Cranberry Apple Walnut Grilled Chicken Salad. One of three new premium salads at Carl's Jr. The video reflects a hot, popular celebrity living a luxurious lifestyle. She promotes the message of eating healthy to look sexy with the slogan Who said salads can't be hot? <laughs> this marketing message gave the company a brilliant opportunity to play on sensuality to attract more attention. The video depicts Kim Kardashian eating a Carl's Jr. salad in a sensual way with little clothing. I think it's a tame video on something that has gone way out of its original context. Um, I I'm asking myself, like, why can't they be more creative than this? Like, why are they choosing this safe route via sex appeal? <laughs> where is the trust in a brand that aim for what is popular and trendy? And where is the brand and celebrities' integrity? And all this like there's so many ways to sell a fucking salad and still I choose the easy way out by appealing to people's sense of sex appeal and sensuality like come on in this excerpt you can watch the director's statements about why they choose Kim Kardashian for the role in their salad commercial for Carl's Jr. <laughs> Today we're shooting uh, Kim Kardashian for Carl's Jr.'s new line of salads. They're a premium salad that uh, it's basically what you get in a restaurant, but you can get at Carl's Jr. now. The reason why we, we chose Kim is no one is hotter right now. She's hot, hot, hot. Um, and we know that guys are going to want to watch her, and uh, women can relate to her. So she seems to be the perfect, perfect person to, to uh, star in our commercial. The ads are iconic, and I always would watch those commercials and it just looked so delicious and I wanted to be a part of it. When the salad idea came about, it was just the perfect fit. Kim is a fantastic person to work with. She's really energetic. She's really into the, the product. She seems like she's having the best time ever on the set. Salads can't be hot is the perfect tagline for these salads. Salads are sexy. You want to look your best. And so when you're eating something that tastes good, that you know is good for you, that's sexy. That's hot. One company that is also well known for their extensive use of celebrity endorsement and viral marketing is the Finnish consumer electronics company Nokia. The Guardian points out that Nokia will be bringing back in May 2018 the 8110 slider phone which was first popularized in the science fiction movie The Matrix. The release does not seem to be meant to compete with modern smartphones but rather looks like an attempt to bring back attention to the brand and thus influence consumers into a state of nostalgia that will hopefully lead to buying behavior. The American singer, songwriter and television star Katy Perry signed to a recording agreement with the American record label Capitol Records in April 2007. Eight years later, she was ranked by Forbes Business Magazine on their top earning woman in music list as the highest earning female celebrity in 2015. The next link leads to Capitol Records signing a partnership with Nokia. I believe the people working for the Finnish electronics company saw Katy Perry's enormous success as a great opportunity to advertise products in some of her music videos to influence millions of viewers. The phone Nokia Lumia 1020 got endorsed in her video for Rower as a perfect selfie device. The video has generated whole 2.4 billion views on YouTube and it is certainly guaranteed that viewers will be influenced into wanting to purchase the promoted product. You can also find that Katy Perry are promoting Nokia cell phones in her music videos This Is How We Do, Wide Awake, Waking Up In Vegas, and Hot And Cold. Uh -huh. I 
see you. Yo, this goes out to all you kids that still have their cars at the club. This might not be obvious to most people, but when a company or brand appeals to consumers' emotions through marketing messages, they have the ability to manipulate people's thoughts into more than buying products or services. The technique can also be used in politics. Research conducted shows that celebrity endorsements is used to promote political candidates to influence audience behavior and thinking. Often candidates utilize this strategy to attract with a younger generation of possible voters. Hundreds of millions of dollars get spent during presidential campaigns to powerfully manipulate the citizens into supporting the candidate. Under the 2009 United States elections, Katy Perry, amongst other celebrities, encouraged her fans on Twitter to give their vote for Obama. Katy Perry was also used as a candidate to publicly endorse Hillary Clinton for president in 2016. Social media has made it much easier over the last several elections for organizations and individuals to influence large masses into voting for presidential candidates. However, just because celebrities are playing a prominent role in influencing people into voting for a certain candidate doesn't mean that the attention she or he draws are carrying the day. Web-based communication platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Snapchat and Instagram has made it possible for people to virally interact and share information with each other across the globe. Social media has also opened new opportunities for companies to gather information and data about users to their advantage. Data scientist and whistleblower Christopher Wiley, who specializes in data analysis and data mining, recently revealed in an interview held by The Guardian shocking information of what was going on behind the scenes when working for the private firm Cambridge Analytica. Wiley stated that he contributed with the development of a well-designed system that collects personal data without user permission to target social media users with personalized political advertisements to influence their voting decisions and behavior. He also stated that the company spent $1 million harvesting millions of American Facebook profiles to influence the heart and the mind of American voters. According to an article written by Forbes, Cambridge Analytical was hired by the Trump's campaign digital director Brad Perscale in June 2016 to analyze data and help refine political messages for Trump. Christopher Wiley also stated in the interview that in order to successfully change how people think about something or someone, one must expose people to advertising again and again. This statement ironically resonates with a quote by German Nazi politician and Reichsminister of Propaganda and Nazi Germany, Joseph Goebbels. If you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. Here are other quotes by Joseph Goebbels that might put you in a state of deep thinking. Think of the press as a great keyboard on which the government can play. The essence of propaganda consists in winning people over to an idea so sincerely, so widely, that in the end they succumb to it utterly and can never escape from it. Propaganda works best when those who are being manipulated are confident that they are acting on their own free will. This is the secret of propaganda. Those who are to be persuaded by it should be completely immersed in the ideas of the propaganda without ever noticing that they are being immersed in it. The truth is the greatest enemy of the state. His quote states how easy it is to manipulate the human mind and behavior. The advertising industry are fully aware of this and they even operate by the same principles as the quotes by Nazi politician Joseph Goebbels. It's bizarre to think about, I think. So having reviewed and investigated how the advertising industry utilized celebrity endorsement as a marketing strategy to influence consumer buying behavior, a conclusion can be drawn that this technique is capable of manipulating people's values, self-image, thoughts, 
and perception of the world. By exploring this, the research also discovered how the impact of social media has opened opportunities for advertisers and celebrity endorsers. Social networking services have also made it possible for data companies to collect personal data and information from people's internet profiles in order to create customized advertisement. Further investigations shows that media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Snapchat has become a place where celebrities can advertise products or services of any kind to their followers. Many young targets are not aware of this and they do not understand that they are being exposed to spamming of advertising. The more investors and sponsors a celebrity sign deals with, the more they will have to promote on their blog, show, public profiles and whatever platform they are operating in. So the exposure to advertising related to materialism and, uh, and luxurious lifestyles teaches people from a young age that success and happiness is defined by how much wealth you have, not who you are as a person. Celebrity ads that portray perfect and flawless faces and bodies actually encourage people to purchase products or services that can change or fix on their natural appearance. As a result, this can create a society where people grow up and think they are not beautiful enough or skinny enough compared to what is being depicted to them as normal in magazines, TV shows, advertisements, and so on. This can then lead to psychological issues like depression, anxiety, eating disorders, and so on. Celebrity advertisements that promote physical things or objects contribute to a society that values and strive after materialistic things in order to feel successful. Advertisements built on materialism and success appeals can also have a significant impact on the psychology of people and lead to a cultural division and separate communities. Cultural divisions make it easy for people to categorize other people in characterized groups based on which status they have. I believe that in order to gain back control of our own mind and true values, we will need to become fully conscious to what is going on behind the scenes in a world full of mind programming, propaganda and advertising. To make people aware of the techniques being used by the advertising industry, we can make people less susceptible to manipulation. I think that we should encourage each other to ask big questions. And I would also like to remind people of the importance of self-study on topics you, uh, topics you are passionate and, and interested in. Knowledge is power. So do not let the, the cynical advertising industry have control over your choices, true values, life goals and appearance. Listen to your intuition and always ask yourself in situations where you notice you're being influenced by marketing strategies. Who am I? And what do I stand for? That's where you will gain back your true self, I believe. Have a good week.